Now, Mike, I saw you take the last little bit of that there, and you decided to pour a little water in it because it's 145 proof. I had to proof it down a little you, bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you proofed, but, you proofed it down to about 15. I was going to say he did. I made it was a, three quarters of that Glen Karen one. I made a white claw. <laughs> Yeah, I tell you what, that was uh, that was a bit of proving water there. I've never seen anybody add that much. So you had maybe a sip left, and you added about three ounces of water. Welcome to another trip down the Bourbon Road with your hosts, Jim and Mike. So grab a glass of your favorite bourbon and kick back. We would like to thank Tommy and Gwen Mitchell from Logheads Home Center for supporting this episode of The Bourbon Road. Find out more about their fine rustic furniture at logheadshomecenter.com. Hello, everybody. I'm Jim Shannon. I'm Mike Hyatt. And this is The Bourbon Road. And today, Mike, we're at Jephthah Bend Farm. Yeah, we're out here in our studio. Bourbon one, Road? 1B. 1B. <laughs> <laughs> we got a, you, you brought somebody over here special, huh? And somebody that our listeners have been asking to come back on to said, hey, could you get him back on there? And magically, you brought him over tonight. That's right. I'm not believing that, but whatever. <laughs> hey. Randy, welcome back to the Bourbon Road. Oh, thank you, guys. It is good to be back. Good to be back in the great state of Kentucky. We miss our old Kentucky home, just have to say. Yeah. I'm not going to say tears flowed when we hit the border, but, buddy, the, the grass is green here, and we sure miss it up there on the mountains in, in Virginia. And, of course, we, you know. While we're here, we've got to we got to load up, get the good stuff. You got to load up, huh? garbage got to, shopping. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, you go back, and so anyway, yeah. Proud of you guys and what you've been doing. We've been keeping track of you there and the Bourbon Roadies. Hey, welcome to you guys too, because that that group has really grown since since I left. So good job. That's is all I can say. Well, it's been a fun ride. There's no doubt about it. And you know, the Roadies has been a real. Real treat. It's been a real treat to well, have those guys. Well, you know, the bourbon community, I mean, it, it was that way even when I left is a lot of good folks and, and come together and, hey, I got something. You guys need to try this, you know, and, and a lot of sharing and caring, I guess you could say, as far as the roadies go, too. So, man. So, Mike, with that in mind, what are we doing today? Well, we both had a whole bunch of sample bottles. And we've had people send some sample bottles and we just haven't had a chance to get it. it. You know, we had kind of the turnover from Randy to me and then um, then we had our holiday break and then we went straight into COVID-19 and we just it's been a busy. It's been a busy year. Yeah. 2020 is halfway over. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. But we got these sample bottles and we got a uh, Ryan Sadler, one of our roadies. He sent us a pack and that's what we're going to we're going to start drinking on those first. And Ryan, we're, we're awful sorry it took us so long to get around <laughs> to these, but we're going to enjoy them today with Randy and hey, hey, looking forward to it. Man, big shout out, Ryan. Thank you so much. So that's a, that, the first one we hear has is from Smoke Wagon, Desert Jewel, 10 year. Um, 104 proof. Um, if, if you don't know where Smoke Wagon is, out in Las Vegas. Uh, right now, he's sourcing his whiskey. I, I believe it's MGP juice is what you said, Jim. Right. So what's the name of this again? Smoke Wagon. Smoke Wagon. Yeah. I love the name. Hey. So you're expecting a little smoke on the, on the yeah, nose well, there? You know, I, I would think that it would be there would be something. Well, I'm getting that itch, Mike. Let's move on. What do you think? I, it's killing me over here. I've actually wanted to try this uh, Desert Jewel for a while. I've seen people talk about it, drink it, and it's just, um, man, let's do it. All right. And that's some good stuff. Desert Jewel for sure. Yeah. You know that's what? That's a sweet spice like a, I'd expect something out of a desert like that. Well, yeah, I'm getting the spice on the back end, but when I first went, you know, first hit it, it was almost creamy. Yeah. You know, almost like a, I was like, wow, that's almost like biting into a vanilla cream chocolate. And then you get that spice on the back end. Yeah. Have you stuff. ever, you guys ever get, uh, go to Costco and get those, um, cashew clusters? Oh yeah. You had those before? Yes. Have you ever had those, Mike? Oh yeah. So, you know, when you get to the bottom of the bag and it's nothing but like crumbs, 
<laughs> That's, this is it. This, this is, is it. it. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, I would kind of go with Randy, and I'm thinking almost like a pepper jelly mixed with a cream cheese. There you go. That um, like uh, like a gouda or something. Yeah. You know? That that yeah. yeah I've seen it had gouda with that like pepper jelly in it too. It, it's uh it's pretty good. What's what's the cheese? Now, so is that smoked gouda? Mm. Just just regular old. Not Gouda. I think a Brie. Brie. Maybe. That's yeah. Brie, it. Brie. Yep. With the, it has that heart and then that soft center in inside there, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm getting I, some kind of praline or something in this like goo goo cluster, like a little nut, a yeah, little like nut, a little nut cluster, yeah. a, a sweet, a sweetened nut with some drizzle on it. And that's why I said those those cashew clusters. It's because first thing that came to my mind, but. Pecan, I think might might be pecan. It is definitely it, it, not cashews. It, it's uh, pecan is what I'm getting. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's pecans. I could tell or Randy pe- or pecan. I could tell Randy really missed the bourbon roll. Oh, you guys just don't know. He done, he done <laughs> his glass. You guys just don't know that one. And that was good. Good job, Ryan. That that one was was a specialty for sure. Well, that that's a treat, Mike. No doubt. Yeah, I, I, I've seen him post. He's big on social media. He's doing lots of giveaways from his distillery always. Um, you know, people talk about it. He dips and he has a spit cup. He gave a spit cup away the other day, but he sent a bottle with a spit uh, cup. Was it empty? Or did you, d- yeah, I'm hoping he didn't send spit <laughs> in it. <laughs> but he sent a bottle with it. I think he sent a hat. He's he's always sending people out to – or uh, some of his product out. And, you know, that's – that's that bourbon way, right? Uh, yeah, I, I, that's, that's what I'm saying. The bourbon culture, and and since we way back over a year ago, when when this thing first started, the people have just been fantabulous. And I'm in search of a bottle now. I, I I had zero bottles on my list for the moment because things have been a bit slow. But but you're ready for this? Uh, I just thing? added. I just added a bottle to my list. Yeah, we'll see if we can get him to uh, hook the bourbon road up. See, Man, but, I, but that's what that's what sucks is I'm not. Here, yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to come back more often. It man. comes slumming sometimes. I'll tell you, well, Randy. I'll tell you what. If you you send me your address, not, right. so, not so I can stalk you or anything, but no, nope. um, I just got four cases of sample bottles. What? And I'll send you some. Do I do I have to work hard and do tasting notes on all this, Big Chief? Yeah, I, I'm gonna. De- I'll definitely. You don't have to do nothing. You just enjoy it. Get up on that mountain and uh, get close to God. <laughs> I, I'm gonna tell you what, and and we're close. There are times when we are up in the clouds, so it's. I don't know. I, it's just majestic. We have a pair of eagles that are nesting near us, and hey, a little sip of bourbon never hurts. Mike, what's next on our list, man? I, I so I've pulled two out of here and. I don't know how I pulled two out that I've really wanted to try this too. And I was actually um, doing research today on which distilleries I wanted to talk to for our craft distillery series. Uh And uh, Wiggle out of uh, Pennsylvania. Is it Weigel? Weigel? It should be. There's one G, right? Yeah. It should be Weigel. I I don't know. Hell, I'm from Texas. Is it an I or Y? It's W-I-G-L-E. Weigel. Weigel? I'm going Weigel. I'm going to go Weigel because I think the double G is where you get the wig. And if we're wrong, Mr. Wiggle Weigel, Wiggle, Wiggle, Wiggle. give us a call. So they're out of Pennsylvania. It's a, this is a weeded whiskey. Um, oh, boy. This is up your, your, your alley right here, isn't it? Yeah. It's 84 proof, um, a two-year-old. But I've wanted to try this. Um, you know, weeded whiskey, that is right up my alley. Heck, I think I drank a half a bottle of weeded whiskey the other night uh, down at the campfire. So. Um, I'm excited about this, Jim. What was that you were drinking at the campfire, Mike? Well, I drink that wood. I will drink Woodford Reserve. That wheat whiskey. Wheat whiskey. How is that? I, I you know, I haven't tried the the Woodford weeded. Oh, we'll send you home with a bottle. You you just saved him from saying chicken cock on air. Well, no, we did have we did. <laughs> so somebody brought over a bottle, a new bottle of the uh, the chicken cock, and it has that uh, chicken wire on the bottle. You know the design. Oh, I got you. And uh, it was brand new brought it over and i think that bottle left there was only a quarter left in that bottle but we had like seven bottles of whiskey down at the creek uh so we we had a little bit of everything down there for everybody we had a bottle of rye from wilderness trail we had that that wilderness trail or i was trying to think what else we had down there pork butt we did have some pork butt. <laughs> I smoked some i smoked some pork butt and it had uh it actually had cabin steel in it (laughs) Well, uh, if you if you've never had any of, of Mike's meat, when he when he gets to smoking, no, it's good stuff. Okay, that sounded bad, didn't it? I'm sorry. That's a nice pour, Randy. Oh, thank you, sir. 
All right, we're having to reach across the room. We're doing proper social distancing here. It seems like we're right next to each well, other. Well, you know what I noticed that was interesting? I've had friends that had COVID, you know, and then recovered. But all of my friends that drink bourbon, none of them have gotten this stuff so far. Let's knock on wood. But none, no one I know that has that drinks bourbon has got COVID yet. So Now, Mike, mm-hmm. you live three miles out of Country Road here. Is that about right? Three miles from, from White Castle. Okay, so three miles out of Country Road. And there's, I mean, you can drive all the way from White Castle to your house, and a lot of times you won't even pass one car. Sometimes you do, but sometimes you don't even pass a single most, car. Most times, usually a tractor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there was a fellow walking down the road with a skateboard about halfway down wearing a mask. Really? On the country road. Out here in God's country with a mask. Might on. catch that COVID out here from His a, mommy said from you a cow. cannot go out of the house without that mask. <laughs> I'm sure. Shouldn't make fun of him. He's doing what he thinks right. Well, that's that's it. Everybody do what you need to do to stay safe. Wow, this is sweet on the nose. I don't know what that nose is. I, I, that's maple. That's maple syrup. That's um I'm catching something else though. Yeah, it's 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 there's a corn sweetness there, but it's heavier. Yeah. Well heck, let's taste this. Got a little bite on the back of the palate there, don't it? I don't. I don't think there's any bite at all. No, that. not after that. Not after on the sides. I got it up top on the right. Did you? Yeah, but it wasn't wasn't much. Repeat, Mike. What is this? This is Weigel Weigel uh, Pennsylvania wheat whiskey. Okay, this is this is sweet. It's soft up front. Yes, it is. But it yeah. introduces itself with a little more aggression on the back. I, think. I was going to say the mid palate starts picking things up there in a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of. After the second sip of it, I get a little bit of pepper on the back end, but not anything close to that smoke wagon. You know, 84%, it's not going to, or 84 proof, it's not going to be super uh, spicy, I don't think, and it's a wheat, so softer grain. Yeah, real smooth. Though. This has got a little bit of bitterness on it, but not not enough to make me say I don't like it. It's sw- I think it might be said it's so sweet on the front that by the time it gets to the back and that pepper hits you, you get a little bit of bitterness with it. I don't know. I would think this is a, what's that? What's the uh, lollipop that the owl licks on? Tootsie, tootsie Pop. Toots, is it tootsie Pop? Yep. Yeah. Tootsie Roll That's, Pop, whatever. You know, like one of the chocolate ones. I'd probably sit and drink a whole bottle of this and be in trouble because uh, it's it's just a, that, that smooth. Yeah. Yeah. It's smooth whiskey. It's not burning. It's And you can drink it pretty fast. <laughs> I like it. Again, here's another whiskey that's a little bit different than anything else you've had before. It's got it's got its own profile. It kind of stands out, and I would agree with that. Yeah. Again, don't test me in a blind because I'll forget it. But I I think that this is unique, and I I would hope I could pick it out, but maybe not. I think the nose on it's very distinctive, and this is a little bit different than that Woodford Reserve weeded whiskey to me. Um, it's more creamy than that Woodford Reserve is, where that Woodford Reserve brings a little bit more oak out, and that might be because of the age. This is only two years old. Or that Woodford, I think, is a little bit older than this, maybe a four or six. Weigel Pennsylvania weeded whiskey. And this is, like I said, this is something I've been wanting to get for a while. I've actually had people go to Pennsylvania. They're like, I can't find it. And it just so happened today, I was looking up their their website, and I was checking them out and reading all about them. And I was reading about several other whiskey places, too, and um, saying, I want to reach out to this person, I'll reach out to that person. And, um, man, what a treat. Ryan Sadler, thank you, sir. So, Randy, we'll get a second pour. What have you been doing up on that mountain, man? Actually, walking coon house, running coon house with the four wheeler, and checking out waterfalls. And we happen to live about two miles from the, the Blue Ridge Parkway, which is a beautiful drive if you've ever done that, and uh, about a mile from the Appalachian Trail. So, down at the old country store, every now and again, you see people with backpacks, and I've just really been been chilling and. Uh, <clears throat> Want to work on a EP, not an album, but an extended play, you know, about five songs or so with some of my old buddies from Railroad and Dr. Hook and some of that stuff and see if we can't get some of these guys together to play a little bit. But, you know, that's something I'll be working on this next year. And try so to you got them on board, though, right? Well, I do. And then you guys know, uh, of course, um, Bo Garrett from Montgomery Gentry. Uh, I got a tune called Blondes and Bourbon that yeah. I really want to. He said he'd help me out on that. So I got to get back with Bo on that. And so, you know, just just uh, enjoying life, really, you know. I think he came back to Louisville to get to get another bottle of that Heaven Hill bottle and bond. Well, you know, I love that stuff. Yeah, you do. And I really want to try the seven year, the new, the new, just to see if that extra year really 
did it do anything for it or what well, you've, got, you? you've got a bottle of the six year i do when we get back to my place We'll pour you a good sized sample of that seven year. And that, you can uh, you can go sit up on the mountain and compare and, the two. And, and compare. Yep. Yeah, somebody had actually one of our roadies, he just sent us two bottles of it. Really? I'm gonna tell you, we are we have a big that roadies is a family. You Man, know? I'm t- they may must be to 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 send you guys stuff like that. They're just here. Some try good, this. Good brothers and sisters, what I'd call them. They Mike, what do we what do we got in our glass now? So we got Mackenzie D one Eight four, it says to late taste select repeat is what it is. Taste select repeat, I think that's what the writing says. So, so if you taste it, that that uh, you will repeat this. Is that? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, it's one hundred and four proof. It's a blend of a five year, eight month whiskey and a four year, three months whiskey. Loving the the nose on this one, and that could be a D one Y four. I think it's a DIY. DIY? Four? DIY. Do it. DIY. Drink private it yourself. There you go. DIY. Well, then it would be a DIY four then. Yep. DIY four. Okay. So McKenzie DIY four, taste, select, repeat. Okay. So they have a, they also have a DIY seven that I thought, I think is available in seal box. Okay. This one's a little more balanced, not too sweet up front. This is just on the nose. Got a little bit of, uh, Junipers, or, or I was going to say some kind of floral, something, something, but not too much alcohol in the nose. I, what's uh-huh. the proof on this? Is about one hundred and four. I think one hundred four. Okay, one hundred and four proof. So yeah. I'm liking the nose. It's a little bit minty, a little bit uh, mm-hmm. uh, piney, but that floral definitely comes through on this thing. You better start drinking because I've already tasted it. <laughs> Man, that nose and the palate—they're right on par with each other. Yeah, I could see see that. That is a nice spicy. Now what is the what's the mash bill on this thing? Don't know. Let's see what we can find. DIY four, huh? So Randy, while he's looking that up, <clears throat> so you're up on that mountain. What 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 have you been drinking on lately? Anything new? Well, <clears throat> the the last I finished was was the knob one twenty, you know, and so <clears throat> really like that one, you know, because I had been more the one hundred guy, you know, and then got a hold of a bottle of that. Um, I think somebody actually had given me that or or something, and and so. Actually, even Julie, you know, she she's more of a mixer. Um, she actually was like, hey, that's got some really good flavor. So, you know, cheers, cheers to the knob 120 there. Um, I had a, a bottle of Calumet that we had gotten or I had gotten way back when we were trying to get one of the uh, vets at Churchill Downs. You know, hey, Calumet, the horse farm. And uh, she was actually able to drink that straight. And it was it was actually pretty good. It's, uh, I don't know that I would go out and just buy a bottle of it, but you know, it, it was good stuff. Um, finished up my Russell 10 year, so I may have to work on that again, but in Virginia, you can get Russell reserve 10 year all day long. Yeah. Uh, so a little different there than, than it is here in Kentucky as far as your control so, state. Yeah. It's so you gotta, go to, state. you gotta you go, gotta go to the Virginia store. ABC yeah. to, to get your liquors, but, um, a really cool place Right off of Winter Green. Winter Green is a ski resort. Oh, I've skied there many yeah, times. It's so uh right down from there is a place called Devil's Backbone. And it's no more for a brewery, but what they have there is a little place called the Shanty. And it's kind of like a little cigar bar in a little like a little cabin shack. You go in there and you know, there's the wood stove burning. And and what I noticed was they had a lot of really good mid-shelf stuff. You know, Whistlepig 10 year and the Russell 10, you know, and and some of that stuff through that vein right there. And uh, I was actually impressed. And not a lot, but really good selection, you know. And uh, you're not so, going to have to do without. No, I don't think I will. But it's still not the selection in that state that I get in Kentucky when I come here, you know. So. Yeah, we're a little bit special here, I guess, when it comes to bourbon. You guys are spoiled here. Let me just say. <laughs> Mike, you're going to be so surprised about this DIY four. Do it yourself four uh, from Finger Lakes Distilling, McKenzie Bourbon. You ready for this mash, Bill? Let's hear it. Four grains. 65% corn, 13% spelt. Wheat is 11. Wheat malt is 6. And barley malt is 5. This is a weeded bourbon. This is a weeded bourbon, Mike. And it's got spice like a rye bourbon, doesn't it? I was going to say. I think it has as much spice as that, like that Desert Jewel, which is the same No, proof. no, it doesn't. But this has got a little bit of mintiness to it. Yep. And uh, where's and that, that, flor- that floral hint? 
I like it though. It's, yeah. This is good. It's really good. Max, especially you said weeded. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, no you surprise just, there. You just turn the memories on in that brain. <laughs> yeah, it's just all flowing. So back. this is uh, from Finger Lakes Distilling. It's in Burdette, New York, and it's a blend of two single barrel bourbons. Uh, it's a five year old bourbon with a mash bill seventy corn twenty wheat and ten barley malt, and the a four year old barrel with 59% corn, 28% spelt and 13% wheat malt. What, so it's a it's a weeded bourbon. What is what did you say spelt? Spelt, spelt is a uh, is it spelt an ancient grain wheat? It, yeah, it's a little it's a little different and I don't know a whole lot about spelt. I've heard about it, but um you know, cheer, cheers to New York for trying something yeah. a little different, you know. It worked. Yeah. It, it seems like all the craft distilleries are trying to be their own you know, they're making whiskey, but they're trying to make it their way. Not, you know, they're not trying to make it the same way Kentucky bourbon. I think most of them are trying to do that. Something just a little bit different. That and makes you would it never special. expect that out of New York of all places, you know? And yeah, and it uh, must be tough, I would think, there because of the coldness to make a whiskey unless they're in a, uh, you know, climate controlled warehouse. To get the heat that you would need heat to, you would to need push, stuff. push it up into the staves area. So you, you got horses up there in the mountains, but they weren't mountain horses to begin with. Uh, ours weren't. No. Yeah. The mountain horses up there. Um, but what's interesting is in the valley, when, when I drive down the mountain and get down the mountain and get, get kind of in the Shenandoah Valley, the horse farms look very similar to, to here in Kentucky. Now, they don't have that bluegrass. Like I said, we were less than after that grass when we crossed the border because you don't get that on the mountain up there. You know, Timothy Orchard makes a little bit, but um, you don't get that Kentucky bluegrass. So, yeah, they've had some acclimating to do. We've had to really pump them up to keep some weight on them. That when they're used to this around here, normally we have to keep them off it because of the sugars in the grass here in Kentucky. Buddy, in the spring... That'll fatten your horse up quick. But that must be nice for you is just to get on your horse out there. You, you got time, right? And right. Maybe put a bottle of whiskey in a saddlebag and take a ride. And- I, I'm not, I'm not going to say on the air that I don't take a flask. It is nice. And when the horses actually settle down, because remember, ours weren't used to the rock quite like you get up there, you know, the rock, the rocky surfaces. But um, once they settle into that, Man, you talk about beautiful. And and where we're living, there's three waterfalls on on the camp there. And I, I've been only been to one of them because the other two are very remote. But we're just up from Crabtree Falls, which is a, you know, a lot of people come from Richmond and other places to, to go hike the falls there, you know, up there on the mountain. So... Yeah, it's it's uh it's nice, and you guys know you got got a place to stay. Yeah, we're if, planning it. We're planning you, it. If you ever come up, so you know, Crabtree Falls. I this is back many years ago when my daughter she's twenty three now or twenty four, and when she was three, I actually hiked from the base of Crabtree Falls <laughs> really? all the way to the very very top. That's a that's a hike. Where the lookout is on there with her on my shoulders. So, so you guys you ask what else I was doing before COVID hit the volunteer fire department there. Ask some of us to to actually do some training, and they're constantly getting called out to Crabtree Falls because somebody decided <laughs> to take a selfie, and uh, well, they got a good shot, all right. So <laughs> as they tumbled, and so you know, they're constantly doing rescues there up there up there at Crabtree Falls. But um, beautiful place. So if you hear some heavy breaths on the listeners on the air, that is not me or Jim breathing while Randy's talking. That's old Woodrow. He's sitting here right where this recording today. And he's just, he's panting away. <laughs> does, does Woodrow like bourbon? You know, I don't know. I don't, he I don't likes know. bourbon podcasts. He does oh, like you. bourbon okay. podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> that works. All right, Mike. So what do we have next on our list here? I don't have anything else there. There is something here. Uh, and we, we've all had this. Uh, and we'll go ahead and sample on it for our last one of this half. It's larceny barrel proof. It's uh, I have not had larceny barrel had proof. This. No, I have not. I like larceny. It's a it's a really good solid solid bourbon. In fact, we can get larceny in Virginia, believe it or not. So, but you can't get this. I can't get that. No. So, what's the proof on it, Mike? I knew you were going to do that to me. Hundred and fifteen point two. Okay. Yeah, I've had I've had larceny barrel proof at one twenty three or so. I've had it at one fifteen before. Let's see what it's all about. Oh, one fifteen should be good. Oh Lord, Big Chief done hook me up with this pour. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, ah. another, another weeded bourbon here for me. Oh wow! Yeah. 
You're getting your fair share of weeds tonight. I'm gonna I'm gonna sleep well tonight. <laughs> oh, you can s- a little bit a little bit more proof on the sniffer there. Yeah. That might straighten that nose hair you had it problems might, with. It might just straighten it out. <laughs> We've posted this bottle before. I've got a bottle of it, and it took a beating on social media. Really? Why? I wonder. <clears throat> you know, I just don't think a lot of people like larceny, or they don't think they like larceny, or they don't like weeded bourbons. It just took a beating all day long, and I, I don't know. Um, you know, I, re- I really don't know. What? Well, you know, what What was the motto of this, this show when it first started? Your bourbon, your way. And so that may not be some people's way. I don't think this is only, I think, 60 some bucks. Um, the ones I bought, I'm pretty positive. Well, it introduced, Larceny Barrel Proof introduced into the market uh, here in Louisville at $115 a bottle. So I'm not sure what it is now. But, you know, it was, and I haven't had a bottle since the initial release. I bought the. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to look this up, Jim. I'm gonna look it up. You know the the mid didn't stand out, and nothing stood out. Yeah, for me, it's uh, it's good. I mean, it's a it's a good bourbon. It's um, it's nothing uh, spectacular. It's just it's just a good solid solid good, that's solid, solid bourbon. Would be a good bourbon. It doesn't it doesn't raise my eyebrows at all. It doesn't make me go, "Wow, I got to get a bottle." But it's I would sit with good friends and sip on this all night long. And I'd be perfectly happy to do so. So 49 99 retail. And I, I bought it right up here at paradise liquor for 60 bucks. Yeah. It introduced, it's been a couple of years, but it introduced, I know we went down to a release and I think at that time it was, a, it might've been even a single barrel because they're the different bottles had different proofs on them. And uh, okay. this was probably two years ago, maybe a little bit longer, and they were one fifteen a bottle. And there might have been a lot of pushback for that. That might have been who knows. But is, is, that, is that why you think it, it got the bad I, rap? I don't. Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe some bad reviews. Maybe I mean let's let's be honest, guys. This is good bourbon, but it's nothing. Um, it's nothing to write home about. But I wouldn't just give it a re- bad review on what I've tasted and and uh, the nose on this one here though. No, and you know what? 40, 40 bucks plus for a bottle. Uh, See, more. I totally disagree with Jim. I think this is a special pour for a weeded bourbon drinker. And he's the what he's saying is what people some people online, but I think they're totally wrong. But your bourbon your way, you decide. I think it's a great whiskey. It's a great weeded whiskey. It's a little bit there up in proof. Um, and I'd pay sixty dollars all day long compared to what other people are paying for other stuff. I mean, I think I just said that that I, that, that for the price, this is a good bargain. No I, it's a pretty, I love it. But you know what's interesting with the three guys sitting here? You had to turn me on to rye. I was not a rye guy like you are. I've been trying with Mike, but it's not working. Uh, okay, he's been a, he's been a weeder ever since I knew him. And and I'm just your straight traditionalist over yeah. here. You know, it's it's almost like if the three of us could agree on something, that's got to be some pretty daggum good <laughs> bourbon right there. I, I I just people will beat it up and or you know it's just not in their wheelhouse and uh, maybe it is the weeders that maybe some weeders are beating it up too that they don't like the how spicy it is it has a little bit more spice, here's, a little here's, spice. here's my here's my thing with with this if you were to give me this and next to it in another glass you were to give me straight ninety four proof larceny right off the shelf I'm not sure which I'd prefer. I'm not 100% sure. I might actually prefer the 94 because I really do like Larceny. I think it's, it's a- Larceny is a good bur- – in fact, if you go downtown Louisville, the last time I actually had Larceny out and about, the poor price-wise compared to some of the other stuff that was available, I ended up going Larceny that night. You know, and uh, yeah, you can find larceny in the store every day or in most bars. And the, the like you said, the price point on it is not bad at all. Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe the magic in this bourbon is somewhere between 115 and 94. You know, no, you got a point there. Might be because I, I like the 94 all day long. Yeah. But remember, mine's, you know, my alley, I guess you could say, is right around that 100 proof. Yeah. You know, where you guys like the hotter stuff. And what was the proof on this? One one fifteen one fifteen point two. But for a one fifteen, this is really smooth. Yeah, yeah. It, 
this be right up. Well, I'm, I'm, I mean, you can't be the professed king of weedy king of Kentucky and not drink weeded whiskey. So <laughs> I, I just think any wheat to me almost there are some wheats that, Jim, you know, I have like, man, I don't like that wheat whiskey right there, but or mm-hmm. weeded bourbon. Right yeah, here. I mean, you're not just a category guy. You don't just like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that. But for me, for me, this is um, this is a good bourbon. It's a great bourbon. I'd sit and drink it with friends all night long. I just don't think it brings anything spectacular to the table. How's that? Is that right. a better way to put it? And uh, and I like larceny. I always have. And I think I would be just as happy with a with a regular larceny as I would with the barrel proof. This is like eating cocoa puff cereal all day long for me <laughs> cocoa puffs well yeah, the memory created wouldn't be necessarily the bourbon it would be the atmosphere oh yeah, what you're saying. yeah. yeah. <clears throat> all right ryan sadler my friend we sure appreciate it thank we you do. for we for have, making we have thoroughly enjoyed the four samples that you sent us and uh cheers to you my friend we uh, we thank you very much in fact you sent us some things we'd never had before and that's always a treat appreciate it man. oh yeah all right, Mike, what do you say we take a short break here? We'll uh, load up and do it again. We're going to get in some old whiskey. Right we're going to make some old whiskey. Old so we've, got to, we've got some more. We've got some more samples that were sent to us. And some old whiskey for us. some fine Southern, Southern gentlemen, right? All right, there you go. I'd like to thank Tommy and Gwen Mitchell from Logheads Home Center for supporting this episode of The Bourbon Road. Logheads Home Center, nestled in the hills of Kentucky, is an industry leader in building handcrafted rustic furniture. Family owned and operated, they take pride in offering only the very best for their customers. The Logheads, and that's what they like to call themselves, are skilled woodcrafters who are passionate about creating rustic furniture for people who appreciate the beauty of natural wood. Owners Tommy and Gwen don't just sell the rustic lifestyle, they live it. And you can be sure that Logheads Furniture will always be handcrafted in Kentucky by artisans who embrace the simple way of life. Logheads Rustic Furniture is made from northern white cedar, a sustainable wood that's naturally rot and termite resistant. Its beauty and quality will add warmth to your earthy lifestyle for generations to come. Be sure to check out everything they have to offer at logheadshomecenter.com. And while you're at it, Give Tommy and Gwen a shout on Facebook or Instagram at Logheads Home Center. Well, we are back and uh, we've got another round of samples for everybody. We've got the first one poured here. I'm telling you. You ready? I'm ready. What, what do you got for us? Okay. Jim? So on for first of all, a big shout out to Dan Trout. Dan has uh, has a YouTube channel called Dusty Dan's Whiskey Reviews. He was a guest on I don't know the episode number right away, but, but it was near the near the first yeah, first ten or so episodes yeah. we had. We had some we had some YouTubers on and we had a, a bottle share challenge and it was a great night. We had a lot oh, of fun. Man, it was it was great. And uh We'll always remember Dusty Dan. Yep. Dusty Dan won the night with his uh, Four Roses, I think it was, single barrel. Was it? I, all I know is I remember the Infinity Blend from that. Yep. It's the best I've ever had. Roadmap. <laughs> yep. Roadmap. Roadmap was the <laughs> best, man. Well, what he sent, uh, he sent us a whole box of samples here, and we can't get through them all tonight. He's such a generous guy, but we did get, we did p- to pull two of them out. Um, we're going to save a number of those samples he sent us for another night. We're going to do a, a dusty night. But tonight we're going to have, first of all, in our glass is bottle B. And by his chart, that's a four roses, single barrel, barrel select, OESV, nine year, six month, Jamie Ferris, Lincoln Road pick. So you know it's going to be good. Jamie Ferris, Lincoln Road pick. Are you ready, fellas? Catch the spice from the four roses. Definitely yeah. spicy. Yeah, it is. Man, that's got a great nose on it. I could sit here and sniff on this all day long. But that's the pretty daggum smooth. Now, how old did you say this was, Jim? 9.6. Nine years, six months. What year was it? Um, we've had these. He, he sent us these samples about six months ago, I guess. So right right after I left then, pretty yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm a sample hoarder. 
<laughs> but, hey. but we're going to get them on a show. There's no doubt. That's good stuff right there. That I is like really that. good. I do. That's got some leather to it. I like that. A little bit of leather. It's, okay. Uh, okay. If you're going to go leather, uh-huh. I'm going to have to go leather that has been conditioned. Conditioned leather. <laughs> like, a, like a good baseball glove. Leather. Or, yeah. <laughs> or it, a, uh, a horse saddle. <laughs> it, you know, like, it, like a horse saddle. You just got to yeah. clean it up. Yeah, yeah. That's good stuff. It's so soft. It brushes its skin. skin. <laughs> You guys are right. <laughs> so, so Randy, you said, you know, you get on that horse and you, you possibly could have a, a a decanter or a flask with you. Uh, 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 I resemble that comment. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of times, especially at the first of the ride, they want to go back to the barn. You know, our, our horses are spoiled. They've been in Kentucky. What do you expect? <laughs> and so, you know, they want to go back, but later on as things settle down or you get down to, to a fall or to a, you know, an overlook and you're looking down through the valley and stuff, you know, you can, you got time to take you out a little something, have a little swig. A little uh, snip. Yeah. Uh, just, a, just, just a little. And uh, I'm telling you, it's, it's very relaxing and man, you got to come up and try it sometime. Yeah. I think we're going to probably have our porthole flasks on the, well, that's what I was going to say is, uh, so we got a new sponsor since you left and the uh, who, still, who, who's your sponsor distillery products and premium bar products. They're going to make us some flask. Wow. And we okay. might have to bring some flask with us for hey, you. Hey, bring me one. It gets you up there on the bourbon road. And, and, and we'll have to take pictures for the, Insta- for your Instagram ac- account and all the roadies. Yeah. So, so do we have roadies from Virginia? Mm. Any, any from Virginia? Oh, yeah. We got a, we got a couple from Virginia, a couple of old, Army buddies of mine um, actually live in Virginia. What part? Um, they live, uh, a guy named Kevin Collins. He's got a tree service down in Virginia Beach. Oh, okay. Over to, to yeah. the East Coast area. Yeah. He's always uh, he's always sending me stuff and saying, hey, what about this bottle? What about that bottle? And so I need to get over to Virginia Beach is what you're saying. Most definitely. Okay. All right. We need some information before we leave. <laughs> it seems like he always has a new bottle or something. Well, you know, I've been wanting to go to Virginia Beach. What can you say? From the mountains to the beach. I mean, Virginia is one of those states that has mountains and beach. You know, so. so we had talked about subchapters of uh, roadies if it ever gets that big. And maybe you'll be our Virginia host out there. You know, um, I, I'm doing nothing. So I don't have time for that, <laughs> Jim. <laughs> Mike, I don't, I don't have time for to do, do the roadie stuff. But, you know, I, I might attend a meeting on occasion. <laughs> if there's bourbon to yeah, drink. drink. No. Will there be bourbon there, he I, says? I don't know. Hey. <laughs> but, uh, no, man, I, I just wanted to, I appreciate you guys and deciding to put this together because this is this is fun. This is like the old days right here, man. That's a pretty good whiskey right there. That's right? a real Four good whiskey. Yeah. No doubt. Is I, Dusty Dan, shout out, buddy. This is good stuff. And, you know, one of the things... I'm a true believer in the Four Roses single barrel barrel selects. They're yes, what a great value! I mean, the price on those is what are they running here in, in the thirties? In the thirties? Wow. Okay. That, I mean, and, that's really yeah. good price. And uh, you know, and they're they're pretty darn good. This is an OESV. I'm not a scholar on you know the, the ten different different, form, different yeah. formulas there at ten different recipes. Yeah. But, Recipes. That's because he's just a bourbon bullshitter. He's not a bourbon expert. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah, this is a this is a good one, Dan. Awesome pick. Glad you sent it to us. I enjoy it. I'm, I'm sure once he won our challenge contest with that four roses. Oh yeah, we, he ended up with a his head was expanded before he walked out the door. Now, for sure. Did he leave you guys with a Scooby snack? Oh, let me tell you about that Scooby snack. Yeah. Oh, Julie loved that stuff. I noticed there wasn't as much mixer going into that as there usually was when she mixed her wine. Well, that's good because that's a that's a fine bottle there. It, 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 <clears throat> we enjoyed our Scooby snacks, and I think she she really wanted to keep the. I don't know if, if it was packed up because I think she wanted to keep the bottle. Yeah. As as you know, decor. So, yeah. Thanks. All right. So next on our list, guys, are we ready? Let's do it. Next on our list is barrel rye single barrel. 13 year 13 year put your seat belts on man 145.2 proof 
You know, I think we were a little low on antifreeze when we got here to Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think my nose hairs were going to burn. I was going to say that one will be straightened after this for sure, buddy. So I guess once once a bottle reaches 140 proof, you have to designate it as hazardous material, hazmat. So this is a hazmat bottle. It's 145.2 proof. You know, no, under normal situation, I think we should probably save this till last. But we got one more after this. When was this? When was this distilled? Uh, I I would have to Google it, but this is again. We got this about six months ago. Um, I'm I'm assuming it came from his current collection, so uh, probably a year to two years. Yeah, you know? at, at 145. I 145 just, I've never had. I mean, moonshine is the only thing I had that was this. Now this is a very light colored whiskey. It's not real dark, and it's been a lot of time in a heavy charred barrel. This is more vanilla colored than than amber, actually. You know, when you look at it, very light. That blonde, I guess. Yes, blonde. Now, take take a nose on that. Do you get 145 proof? No, there's no way that I would just nosing this, not knowing, think that this was 145. Now, the other day, I drank some 160 proof. Right? What? What was 160 proof? <laughs> It straight didn't off the, come out as straight off the still. It did. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There you go. <laughs> that's the nice thing when you go back in a distillery like, and they'll let you try some stuff. Yeah. Like I said, that'll burn you a new one on the way. Whatever down. mean you tried to uh, try the the juice straight off the still over there at Wilderness Trail that day. Oh yeah. That's pretty good stuff. Yeah. But I don't think that was coming off the still at 160 or 140. My favorite white dogs from 1792. I just love it there. You know, I've never had any of that. Well, they don't bottle it. You got to actually go on the tour to get gotta it. Go on the tour. But um, yeah, it's it's like drinking hot buttered popcorn. So, Randy, you took a sip of this already, right? What do you think about that? For 145, though, I don't know that it was that hot. Yeah. You know? So, it's definitely will fool you on the nose. If you're, if you're nosing this, and somebody asked me, what's the proof? Now, you, I would definitely say 112 to 115, you're maybe. You're going to get the alcohol on the nose. I mean, you just are at 145, but it's very sweet to me. Um, like butterscotch, just, oh, just yeah, here's blow you. it up. Yeah, it's got a lot of, uh, it's got a little bit of viscosity to it. It coats the tongue. That's a good rye. Now, Barrel puts out some stuff that'll, It'll get your attention. And the legs are actually very good on this. From, yeah. from I don't often get to drink uh, 140 plus. I don't often get to turn the tap on hazmat, but, yeah. you know. There you go. I am definitely get that <clears throat> Kentucky hug going on right yeah. now. Oh, yeah. Kentucky kiss, Kentucky hug. Now trouble's giving me a tuck. Well, good thing we're taking micro pours tonight yeah, because. I know, that's right. <laughs> I'd be three sheets to. To Whatever. Midland? To Midland. <laughs> I'd be down there trying to swim in Jep the Creek. <laughs> Just stro- stroking rocks is what you'd be doing. <laughs> exactly. Man, I mean, I tell you what, guys. I might need a little bit of water before we drink that last one tonight. Now, what? where'd you say that was from, Jim? Barrelcraft Spirits is actually in Louisville, Kentucky. What? Yeah. And Barrelcraft Spirits. Are, are they like the MGP? Uh, well, I, I think they, they curate barrels and they make blends. So Barrelcraft Spirits is kind of a, a but blend. who blends at 145, Jim? I took yeah, that Kentucky hug has moved on down. Uh, yeah. Well, I tell you what, I think that's got a rather long finish and a big Kentucky hug, and we'll call it a Kentucky bear hug. I I would agree with that. I'm gonna need a glass of water. <laughs> that's a, that's some strong stuff right there, Randy. Can you? Well, never mind. I'll get, I want to get a little water. This water, man. All right. <laughs> Man, that's some hot stuff. <laughs> What'd you say that was called, Preston? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, for for how hot it was, it was it wasn't. It wasn't you, Tabasco. You know how, yeah, I was gonna say. You know how you you get a hot sauce, and sometimes the heat is so much you don't get the flavor. Yeah, that wasn't that quite that way. No, it's very flavorful. Now, Mike. I saw you take the last little bit of that there and you decided to pour the water in it because it's 145 proof. I had to proof it down a little you, bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you, but, proofed, you proofed it down to about 15. I was going to say he did. I made it was a, three quarters of that Glen Karen one. I made a white claw. 
Yeah, I tell you what, that was uh, that was a bit of proving water there. I've never seen anybody add that much. So you had maybe a sip left, and you added about three ounces of water. I just needed to clean it out a little bit there. That's uh, so. What did you guys do tonight? I don't know. It, at last, I heard was one forty five. So I was telling them guys that worked there, like, "What are you going to go home and do tonight?" And I was like, "Well, it's my first night back on day shift," and I was like, "I'm actually going to get to go home and drink some whiskey tonight and relax." A little bit because you know you get off from night shift and that's the last thing you want to do is come home and drink and then you and then get go, up yeah, and go back to yeah. work and you, there's no time to do any of that so it's nice to come home and have a pour and what a surprise it was jim texted me and said hey man randy wants to let's hook up with randy night and have a couple of drinks hey, so. guys i man i really appreciate this and you know the setting is beautiful you know the only thing that would be better if we were down by the creek doing <laughs> doing this we should have been but, here two nights ago oh uh, <laughs> i i missed it okay yeah, missed it. <laughs> all right guys so we've uh, managed to put away the 145 proof rye a little bit of water and we're ready to move on i got a treat for you and what is this treat all right so this is from uh, Jeff Irish. Randy, you know Jeff. Yes, Jeff and Liz are from Bourbon Re. Uh, what is it? What is Bourbon it? Barrel Bourbon Barrel Rehab. Bourbon Barrel Rehab are actually making our dining room table for us, and included in that table will be a footrest from the. I guess what do you call it? The wrought iron stuff that, that, that you know the that that goes for- into your. The concrete and yeah. stuff from the actual rebar. Rebar, yes. From the old crow distillery. Yeah. Is what he's making the footrest out so of. So the old crow distillery, that's the one that has the Glens Creek distilling is Yes, Glens yes. Okay, got that, it. That's that's the old crow distillery. And and people don't know a whole lot about old crow, but you know, Grant Lincoln told Somebody, who do you tell that, you know, hey, if all my generals were like Grant, I'd send them a bear. You know, so they, you had a bunch of other politicians that yeah. came in and um, the Secretary of War, and everybody said, hey, you need to fire Grant because he's, he's drunk and all he wants to do is sit around and drink bourbon and stuff. And But Grant was winning all his battles. Everywhere he yeah. went, he would win. He would win. He would win. He would win. He's always winning the fight. And Lincoln said, hey, does anybody know what General Grant's drinking? They were like, oh, crow. They were like, he was like, well, you better go give me some barrels of that. Because I want to send it to all, send my all my generals. Yeah. So they'll fight as good as Grant. Yeah. That's the, how the story goes. Well, and well, he's not the only one because Truman and Mark Twain, it, it evidently was a, a really big bourbon at the time, you know. Yeah. And so uh, t- for us to have that as a footrest, you know, a piece of history as a footrest on a table from Bourbon Barrel Rehab is going to be freaking awesome. <laughs> Hopefully one day. Uh, and I'm hoping it's sooner than later because it looks like Freddie No is going to have a new craft distillery at Jim Beam to experiment with stuff. I would love to see Freddie No bring back Old Crow and make it a dominant bourbon, like it was in the old days. Yeah. Well, there's some there's some powers to be there. Uh, I think the Nos have a lot of pe- when they stand up and talk, people listen. But there's a there's a big executive board above them that makes a lot of the business decisions. Sure. I don't know if old crows on their list of things to resurrect, but may, I think it should be. I agree with you. I, I think I'm several just, people in the bourbon community would say the same thing. Yeah. I'm just happy that a piece of history is going to be on a table that I'm going to have in Virginia from Kentucky. So oh, thanks yeah. Jeff and Liz over at bourbon barrel rehab. You know, yeah. so. Well, again, thanks to Jeff and Liz. We won't forget Liz for providing the bottle. We're getting ready to drink here. And uh, this is a bottle of, not Old Crow, but Old Granddad. And this bottle of Old Granddad was distilled in 1962. Oh, way before I was born is what you're trying to say. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely before I was born, Randy. I'm not sure about you, buddy. <laughs> but it, I it wasn't was, even a thought back then. <laughs> and it was barreled in 1967. So it's a five-year-old juice. It's old granddad. It's definitely right during the 60s. But if you look at that from here, it's not clear. That's got some good amber color it's to it It's got some still. good color to it. But yeah. it, is a, uh, it is a clear bottle. So do you know whose photo that is or image that is on that bottle on, on old granddad yeah no i actually have not had old granddad but once what about you jim you know who that is that's you know basil who? hayden that dang sure is they basil, basil hayden basil are you hayden. kidding me oh, awesome yeah. 
you know, Basil Hayden was the first bourbon I actually tried when I moved to Kentucky. So, Big Chief, you had to go get a pair of pliers to open up that bottle. I did. I- <laughs> that bottle's been sealed tight since 1967. You know, that's back when they did stuff primo. Well, I'm just glad it's clear juice because when you get something that's 60 years old or almost 60 years old, you want to make sure it's 58 years old Man, since 58. it was distilled. Distilled 58 years ago. So what did you do this last week? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's got uh, some good color to it. Yeah. I, I, that's what has surprised me the most is how, you know, I talk about a, a liquid sunset with bourbon, and that looks just about as good as any I've seen. Back when old granddad was made in Frankfort, Kentucky. Frankfort, Kentucky. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I tell you what, that nose on that, I, it's butterscotchy. But it's butterscotch that has been put on the stove and melted. I could get that. Like homemade butterscotch. Yep. Like, like, like grandma, old, old grandma got old up grandma, in there yeah. with the pot and got busy. Yeah. Wow. That is, um, that's definitely got a dusty flavor to it, doesn't it? It tastes kind of like I went to my grandmother's house. Does it taste I, like grandma's bedroom? I was going to say, am I wrong? <laughs> How would you call that butterscotch? What do you think? There was butterscotch that I smelled from grandma's bedroom. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Um, yeah, I don't know about that one, Jim. I, I might have lost something over that. So I have a question for all of you bourbon connoisseurs. If I buy a bottle of bourbon, how long can I leave that bottle? I mean, that you know, the bourbon in that bottle, and it still be fairly close to what it was when it was. You mean after you open it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I have not had one go bad on me yet. Well, that's gonna. Does it ever go bad, or you know, how long do you really have? So, so this this six year Heaven Hill. Yeah. Okay, you give that to me, and I go. God, I just don't want to open that. I don't want to open that. Well, I think ah, if you keep it, if how, you didn't open it, you put it in a dark, dry place. I do have a dark, dry place, and I <laughs> <laughs> put put my stock from Kentucky. <laughs> anyway, so if you if you, I think if you keep it out of the sunlight, you know, I think most of them people would say that it it's going to stay good. For, but for 60 years or 58 years? Yeah. I mean, if the bottle is, say, mostly empty, probably not. But um, if the bottle is mostly full, probably that, yes. That's a mostly full sample bottle. Right. Now, I yeah. wonder if that had a, a metal metal lid on or a little aluminum lid or something. That the metal started deteriorating. Deteriorating, yeah. you know, over time. And, and maybe that's what I'm tasting in it. I don't, I don't know. I'm getting a bad aftertaste from this. I swear to God, that's grandma's house right there. Yeah, I just think it tastes like a lot of older whiskeys that I've had that are dusty like that. They have that that butterscotchy, musty kind of musty flavor. That's pretty that's pretty typical. Now, is this one a little bit further maybe musty than yeah. Yeah, I think so. I was- I was thinking moldy. <laughs> I mean, when I smelled that, I was sitting there going, I was looking at the, the round oval mirror. I was looking at the old wood from the, the chest of drawers. That I was smell you get from old house. Yeah. Cast iron stove, you know, with the, with the cast iron pot on the, you know, I don't know. That's the, cause we were talking earlier, Jim, about memories. You know, when you open up a certain bourbon, a lot of times it gives you a memory of where you've been or what you might envision. And uh, that that's what I envisioned with that right there. Yeah. All right. So the old granddad from 1967 is not a super big hit because it didn't fare well over the years. Evidently. But that, that has been good back in the day. But well, that's I what mean, I'm thinking. Yeah. I think, I think, I think it's, uh, it's always a crapshoot when you open an old dusty bottle. You never know when you're going to get one that's well preserved or one that didn't do so well. This one didn't get ruined completely, in my opinion. But I think it's probably not as good as it's been in the past. It's probably been a lot better in the yeah. past. But but Jeff and Liz, we do want to thank you for the experience. Yeah, that was that was 
I mean, who gets the chance to, to drink something that's 58 years old, you know? Well, the bourbon robe does. That, that is pretty special. And, you know, you definitely got to thank people for sharing their samples with you, sharing an old Dusty with us, um, you know, bringing back those old memories of your grandmother, or, you know, visiting your grandparents at their house. And, right. You know, that's, that's what the bourbon culture is all about, right, Jim? Absolutely. And Randy, it's been a pleasure to have you back in town, my friend. Guys, I I can't thank you enough for for letting me uh, join you again for some good tastings and uh, get to hang out with the bourbon culture. You know, we were a little bit isolated up on that mountain, but come down into Kentucky and, uh, you know, to see what you guys have been doing with the bourbon road is, is awesome. I'm proud of you guys. Makes your mother and I proud, <laughs> as, they, as they say down in South Georgia. And, uh, you know, good job. Have enjoyed it. And uh, I'm sitting here looking at, at Big Chief's collection. I'm, perhaps we might have an after party. <laughs> <laughs> well, Randy, um, you know, you did invite us to come down to Virginia and visit you. But you did say don't come empty handed. Bring some bourbon. Hey, right? you know, when you cross that line. <laughs> Um, there should be some bourbon behind. So anyway, <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can find us on uh, Instagram. You can find us on Facebook at the Bourbon Road. You can find me at One Big Chief. I'm Jay Shannon, sixty three, and we've got a closed group uh, on Facebook called the Bourbon Roadies, and uh, it's not really closed. It's really open to all you bourbon lovers. We'd love you to come in. You just need to answer a couple questions when you when you ask to join. And we want to make sure you're twenty one, that you know what you're getting yourself into, that you like bourbon, and uh, that you're going to be nice to everybody once you're in there. But when you come in, hey, have hey. fun hanging out with a couple of crazy guys. That's all I got to say. <laughs> hey, post photos. Uh, if you get a little ask from us, post post those photos. We might use them on our Instagram or our Facebook uh, shots. Like Jim said, just be nice to each other, uh, to your fellow man, fellow woman, you know, and we'll, we'll have a great time. You know, that's that's true. With all the chaos going on in the world, hey, here's a bright, sunny spot. And we'd like to thank uh, Distillery Products for sponsoring the show and uh, Premium Bar Products. Uh, you know, they provide all the glassware for the Bourbon Road. Oh, they do? Okay, they do. And oh, wow. And uh, actually, we're, they're on our website now, so if you're looking for a new Glen Cairn or a set of Glen Cairns or you'd like to get some new rocks glasses, uh, make sure you pop into the bourbonroad.com and check out our online store. You know, it's a it's a easy in and out, and you can have yourself some nice Bourbon Road glassware we're always adding new items we're going to add some flasks here pretty soon and eventually some t-shirts and hats and all the good stuff right mike i think we're gonna we'll people will be surprised what we're, we're gonna have me and jim being veterans we'll hoping to have some military glasses in there too uh, with your uh, branches logo on it and stuff a, little, a lot of people like that i have a couple of those um so we'd like to see you buy those from us at a lot cheaper price than you can get them anywhere else so that's right uh, we're not in, in this to make any money we just nope. want to we want to spread the love so. and, and you know as a military brat <laughs> you know we're, we're here to support you guys too so well, Randy, hey, man, thanks again for coming over tonight. Enjoyed hanging out this beautiful Jephthah Creek down here and, uh, you know, uh, trying some bourbon with some good friends. It's what this culture is all about. All right, y'all. We'll see y'all down the bourbon road. There you go. We do appreciate all of our listeners, and we'd like to thank you for taking time out of your day to hang out with us here on the bourbon road. We hope you enjoyed today's show, and if so, we would appreciate if you'd subscribe and rate us a five-star with a review on iTunes. Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Bourbon Road. That way you'll be kept in the loop on all The Bourbon Road happenings. You can also visit our website at thebourbonroad.com to read our blog, listen to the show, or reach out to us directly. We always welcome comments or suggestions, and if you have an idea for a particular guest or topic, be sure to let us know. And again, thanks for hanging out with us.